Good day. So um, we're going to start off with a paper um, just to go over some paper two type tasks that tend to come up. And I'm going to start with a basic task that can come up usually. Um, and this would be a two page letter, an envelope. So this is a paper two from 20, 2007. And so as I would have um, put in my notes, when it comes to letters, um, there can be things that, you know, were, are, show up on the paper one, but for a paper two, they're going to give you more instructions or they might ask you to do more things. And so one of them is definitely they can ask you to do a two page letter. And so you're going to see, I didn't type up a letter, but I pulled up an old letter uh, um, from somebody else um that I can use as an example and this is considered to be a two-page letter it's a two-page letter because the letter of course goes on to two pages and what you're going to see that they did was they had pushed down you should know that the top page of a letter should be two inches from the top and so they had pushed down the date of this letter two inches from the top they have their quadruple space one two three four then they have the um, return, the inside address, sorry, followed by a double space, one, two. And then they have, this is actually a subject line that was asked to put there, followed by a double space. There's no salutation in this particular letter. There's no greeting. And then they have, of course, the body of the letter. And then everything flows to the second page. Something flows to the second page. So what you're going to notice here is that on her second page, she has this information at the top, which if you look on a letter, they're not going to tell you to put that there. They're not. They're not going to tell you what should be there. They're not going to tell you to add a heading. They expect you to know once they say it's a two-page letter that your letter should have a second page heading. And so the second page heading normally should say who this letter is written to, which is taken from up top here, Ministry of Health, the page two, and then the date that the letter was written. This letter was written, well, this would have been incorrect. It should say February 16th because that one said February 16th. And so the format of that is also different. You don't want to lose any points. And so... That's something that I just copy and paste it and correct it. Um, but this would be the format. It goes from who it's written, the who the letter is written to, page two, and then date, and then a double space, and then you continue with the letter. What you don't want to do ever is let's say you're writing a letter and this is all you have on the second page. Normally, what they try to do is they say balance your second page. And so if that means Pulling, cutting, copy, and pasting. That's very helpful. Cutting and pasting information from that first page, just so that you have a little something at the bottom, then you should do that. In most instances, you don't want to do it, whereas if this is a paragraph, you have part of the paragraph up top, par paragraph at the bottom. It's going to be hard for you to actually put that in there. So it's easier to set in the whole paragraph um, below your second page heading. Okay, so I'm just going to undo that information. Good. So this is the full scope of the letter that was actually typed. Now, if you didn't notice something, this letter is actually not a complete letter. Why? Because sometimes they don't give you that information. Sometimes they have it in here but they don't write it to the bottom because they expect you to know in this case they have it here sincerely on the name of the person and so what i'm going to do is i'm going to just come up with something of course we should know our spacing one two that's a double space um let's do sin 
Sara Lee. One, two, three, four, particle space, run your running. That's my name. If my title is nurse, then that's gonna be my title, single space below, and then well, type this initials. Let's say my name is Tabitha Martin. My type is initials T F. Okay. And so that would, of course, properly end this letter. But maybe this letter is a AML style letter. It didn't require this, but it should still have who the letter was written from. So this letter was indeed incomplete. And so this would be what we how we format a two-page letter. Again, the first page follows the two-inch top margin unless the instructions say otherwise. And then on the second page, we don't do a two inch top margin. We just start from the, the one inch section. Um, the best way to achieve this is gonna be to leave your margins at one inches all around. So let's go to layout and margins. You'll see my top left, bottom and right are one inches. Leave it at one inches. And just press enter one, two, three, a few times until it's in line with the one that about two inches. This is one plus you add another one makes it two inches for a top margin on a letter. And so that allows you to start your second page at one inch top margin, which would be the correct way to do. And so this again would be the heading that's required whenever a letter goes on two pages. Okay. Now I can apply some of the instructions here just to show you how it works. Um, Let's see, they say input or key the following two-page letter on a letterhead found in the rear of the examination booklet using the information given. And so, of course, if they give you a letterhead found in the rear of the booklet, that just means that the page already has um, the return address on it. So the paper itself that you're printing this letter on when you put it in your school's printer is going to already have some information at the top. And so you definitely have to make sure you leave that two inch margin space because the front, the first page is the page that's gonna have the letter head. And when you put it in the printer, you should be able to print it properly so that um, the letter head, which is printed information on the paper already, doesn't interfere with the rest of your letter. That's definitely why you start with a two inch top margin. Okay, so that's what that's telling us. The letter is to be sent by special delivery to the attention of Mr. Trevor DeVoe. Now, these are special letter parts that they're referring to, but they're not telling you that they're special letter parts, but you should know certain keywords are going to prompt you that they're asking me to do something. What am I, what are they asking me to do and where does it go? And so, and how is it supposed to be formatted? In this case, the saying the letter is by special delivery. Special delivery is something that involves mailing. So that's actually a mailing notation. And so that means that somewhere on your letter, you should be typing the word special delivery. Now for um, these letters, what happens is right in between the date and the address is where we always type mailing notations. So we should type special delivery right in between, so a double space below the date, and then a double space after is where we type our inside address. And so uh, mailing notations normally are typed in all caps, always. So you wanna make sure you would have typed that in all caps. You lose points, of course, if you typed it in lowercase. Or if you put it in the wrong spot, let's say you put it here, you lose points. Put it there, you would lose points because it doesn't look like a mailing notation anymore, it's gonna look like a subject, which is because this is where the subject line of any letter is supposed to be. And so this is indirectly telling you they want a mailing notation that says special delivery to the attention of Mr. Trevor Delavo. Attention lines is another special letter part. So you may not have seen things like this in a paper one, but in a paper two wall. And so special letter parts like the attention line normally go right below the inside address and right above um, this subject line. 
And so that's everything after this question will be double space. So one, two, double space. And I'm going to put my attention line here. How we do that? ATTN colon. That lets the reader know that this is an attention line. Attention, meaning that this letter needs to go directly to Mr. Trevor Delavo. And so you will type that in there appropriately, Mr. Trevor Delavo. When they open the letter, they see attention. Oh, that's not for anybody in the Ministry of Health. That's actually for Mr. Trevor. This letter is for Mr. Trevor Delavo. And so therefore, that goes in that spot. Again, if you forget the attention, it could look like another letter part. So you have to remember to put that attention, the colon, and the space. And you also have to remember where it goes. It shouldn't go below the subject line because after the subject line is usually the body. It should go above. And so think of it as sometimes it will fall in the same place as dear sir or madam, I guess, the, the salutation, you think of it like that. Use the subject heading, Bahamas Seafood Festival. And so that would, if I was to really put that in there, that just means that it would go in this place here of these words, because this is a subject line. Subject lines normally are all caps and normally right above the body of the letter. That's how many parts so far? One, two, three special letter parts that they have asked you to put so far. We have a modified block style letter mixed punctuation with indented indented paragraphs. And so we should know the different types of letter styles. It could be a block letter. It could be a modified block letter. And so we have to make sure we understand how that's typed. When they say modified block letter, you can or cannot, it doesn't matter, indent your paragraphs. But what's important to know is that your subject sorry, not just subjects, certain parts will shift over to the left, to the right, sorry, um, when you have a modified block style letter. And so those parts are going to be, if you had a return address or a top address, you would tab, 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 over to the middle of the page. This is about three and a half. And let's say um, uh, my address is number 24, Bahama Avenue. Tap, 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 tap. Then I'll put report Bahamas. Tap, 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 tap. Oh, sorry. I thought I was going to put P.O. Box. P.O. Box F4899 or something like that. That's helping you there. Let me know, hey, put that space. And so for my modified block letter, this is where my um, return address would be. Now this is giving me a lot of space in between. And so to fix that, this is definitely not was like that. I'm gonna remove my space and everything should be single space. Something to pay attention to as well. Font, my fonts shouldn't be different fonts on the same document. So I'm going to mirror this with a document um, that's there. So we're pretending that no letterhead is required. But, you know, if you had to type the address in a modified block letter, this is what we would do. We would line it up with the 3.5, which makes it center, and then everything else would go. The date should also follow. So the date of this letter should also... Let's fix this top here for the purpose of this example. But the date should be there as well. And then when we come down, of course, we should know that all of this hair should also line up with this, which is the 3.5, which is good. Why it's good to look at the at the ruler. And so I could tab it over if I wanted to, or I could simply do this, highlight what I want to move. But it's three and a half, and bang, there you go. Now it's considered to be modified block. However, they say with indented paragraphs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to indent each of my paragraphs by coming here in the front line, pressing tab. I can do that every time. Or I can simply highlight my paragraphs, take this and move it over. 
I do all at once. Of course, that's now affected my second page. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this information. And so this is why it's good to get really comfortable with Microsoft Word, because I can move things a whole lot faster. When I move that extra space came there, I had to make sure it's uniform. And so therefore, I move that extra space, highlight, and then drag and move. And now all my paragraphs are indented as they say. Right, so this is considered now a modified block two page letter. Modified block style as well. Okay, good. Mixed punctuation. Mixed punctuation is going to mean that after my salutation complimentary close, I should actually have some type of punctuation. So in this case, if I had a if I had a Dear Mr. Delaval, it's not needed or not asked for in this instance, but um, because this letter doesn't have it, dear Mr. Delavo, that means that I'm going to put my semicolon there. And then, of course, sincerely, comma. That's mixed punctuation versus not having a mixed punctuation. Okay. Um, what else is here? Blocked table with double spacing. Now they're referring to, in this particular question, they actually want you to insert a table and they tell you, they give you the table at the end. This is the table that they actually wanted them to insert here. And so, um, I'll get to the table afterwards and I get down there. Provide a suitable salutation address and address the envelope for me. Salutation, I provided a suitable one. Dear Mr. Delaval, again, most cases when you're adding all these extra stuff, double space above and below. Can't go wrong. Um, so that's done. I'll do the envelope short. Send a photocopy to Miss Linda Pyfrom, who is a festival committee member at Festival's Department, Ministry of Tourism head office. They are telling you all of this, telling you to send a photocopy. That's another special letter part. That special letter part is a copy notation. And a copy notation is one of those letter parts that comes below. In a modified block letter, a copy notation does not follow, does not follow this, but it goes here. And normally you put CC dot, and then you put the name of the person. So in this instance, we're going to put Miss Linda Pyfrom, comma, and then I could put, they give me all this information. And so um, definitely I'm going to put that in Miss Linda Pyfrom. Okay, so that's for the purpose of the actual envelope. But you would type all this information there, Ms. Linda Pyfrom, Festival's Department, Ministry of Tourism, Head Office, not so behind us. You can type all of that in the copy notation spot, which is right here. Copy notation normally comes after um, the typist initials, okay? Um, if it was a blind copy notation, let's say they say that you're sending Ms. Linda Pyfrom, but she doesn't, you don't want... Um, but you're two of them to know, then it's BCC. We would put BCC on there, making it a blind copy notation. As I go through this letter itself, again, what you're going to do is type exactly how they ask you to type or exactly what they ask you to type, paying attention to reading the words, looking out for um, type this corrections. This is one. This is one that's telling me I need to move something. Or I need to start maybe a new paragraph. Yep, NP is somewhere close telling me new paragraph. So they want a new paragraph to start after the word shellfish, starting with the word in. And of course, all the other paragraphs are indented. So when you create this new paragraph, make sure it's also indented. Um, they have this line here, which normally is crossing out something or inserting something. It's an insert. It looks like that with a line just pointing to what they want you to insert. An amateur cook 
who know cooks who know so that makes sense so they want you to insert that word then delights in the best they want you to insert the and therefore um this is a paragraph this looks like they're asking you for another paragraph here um we have this move button well this move um symbol and p new paragraph and so um you just continue to type, 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 type. In some cases, they have these things out on the side and that's just prompting you that, hey, they're asking you to do something there. There's some SP, meaning spelling. There's some spelling issue that they have in this particular line. Probably this word Mediterranean, it looks wrong to me. Um, so that may be the word that they're asking you to correct the spelling for. Here's another bracket new paragraph. And then they ask you to insert table here. If they ask you to insert something, they're always going to give you the information. Sometimes they could ask you to insert something from another task. So you want to pay attention to that as well. But here they're asking you to insert a table. We should know how to do tables. Um, let's say I'm going to insert a table here. Press enter. Normally it's double space, um, even space above and below what you're doing. And you could come and you click insert. Because of course there's more than one way to insert the table. Insert, and if I look at this table here, this table has a table heading. It has one, two, three columns. And this isn't really a row. One, two, three, four, five rows. So that means I'm going to insert a table with three columns and five rows, a three by five table. Because I have, oops, my apologies. Because I have um, a table heading, I'm going to make space for that and still add a table heading in there. Edible, bohemian fish, and shellfish. I'll type that in there. Bahamian fish and shellfish. Did they have that centered? They didn't have it centered. They have common fish and common fish shellfish. Then they have those names. I'm not going to fill out this entire thing for the sake of time. Common fish, shellfish, et cetera, et cetera. Over, et cetera, et cetera. Um, Let's just make this simple as possible. I'm so sorry. Put information everywhere. And so this is the makeup or the start of our table. If I look at how the table is written, there aren't really any lines. These lines are throughout the whole document. So they kind of look like maybe somebody just copied a folder sheet. So they didn't draw any lines in between. So that means that these lines that are here, I have to move. One way to do that, I click that button and I can come and I could say no border. And so now it looks blank, but it still doesn't look like what we have here. If we pay attention, everything is lined up to the left. So make sure all your columns are to the left. But these kind of look, they kind of look, this one doesn't look fully like this is 11. It looks like it may be centered. Um, and it's definitely underlined. So in that case, what I want to do, I want to highlight this column, center it, underline. And now you see it probably looks a lot more similar to what we have if we had it filled with information. Um, you pay attention to those type of things when you're typing um, tables. If I scroll back up, I will see, it did say something about table, block table with double space. Okay, so then that makes something a little different. Um, they say block table, block mean everything to the left. This is my left align button. So I'm gonna leave my headings to the left because the instructions say so. Um, it's a block table, and I want to make sure, I want to make sure, I tend to make sure that 
it's as even as possible. But they tell me double space table. What that means is that these are a little jammed up. And so one way to fix that, let me see if I could still do it this way. If they come here and you can click double space, 2.0. So change your line space in the 2.0 if you want to. Or you can do it the hard way. Press enter, press enter on one of the lines and it's going to double space it up. But you are achieve the same objective ultimately. Again, what you want to make sure you do is have even space above and below your table. So when I look, and I'm insert, once you're inserting a table into another document or something like that, you want to make sure that's the case. I like to make sure my table is distributed evenly. So I tend to auto fit to the window. I like it to look like that. Um, but you just want to make sure that there's no one space in the table that's really big, like that. And then you have like these that's really small. You just want to make sure it's as uniform as possible. Which this is this is okay. Um yeah, so equal space above and below. Right now they have one space or a double space. And then below my table, I have more than that. So what I want to do is just remove one of them. We'll remove one of the spaces so that it's more even when you look at it. Even is 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 what we want to go for. And so in that case, I've inserted the table where they asked me to insert the table. See, are there any others? There's this, of course, this is telling me uppercase. So uppercase C, when I type that, um, nothing else here. For information, call the seafood festival office. It's written at the bottom, like they may have forgotten something, but they're asking you to pull it to the top. So when we type this in, instead of putting it below my salutation, no, sorry, <laughs> below my complimentary clothes name and title, they want you to add it above. And of course, if you have this indented space in between paragraphs, you're going to do the same thing there, indent and put the information there. I think it said uh, put information, put information, blah, blah, blah. And you'll type that there. And of course, we'll make sure that there's a double space after as well. If they tell you a two-page letter, the information has to fit on two pages. And so it should not go over. That's definitely something to take note of. All right. And so this, I mean, like I said, it's not the full information, um, but it gives you an idea. What you'll see from my paper, I have... Um, well, I added an address here, so that makes it a little different. Um, Two-page heading, the second page heading, everything looks uniform. Every paragraph is indented. There's only one space in between every paragraph. There's equal space above and below the start and below of my table. It's modified blocks, so this is pushed over. This is pushed over. I added my um, copy notation. I added my mailing Notation, I added my attention line, I added my salutation, I added my subject line. Um, I added my typist initials. Let's say if I wanted to put the name of the writer, I'm going to put it in capital letters, slash, lowercase letter for the typer. That's how it works. And that's going to be definitely below that. This goes along with the complementary flows name and title. Everything else below this point goes over here. So you have to know what special letter parts they're talking about when they tell you certain things with normally within this section so that you can do it um, correctly. Now, what I like to tell people, because sometimes it can get a little confusing. Oh, I'm going to point this out as well. Sometimes you get the second page or this third page. Just go to the bottom, delete, 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 delete until it's gone. That way you don't miss and print anything on your other paper. Because, of course, you should be putting your name and your your number and everything at the bottom of the footer. So you don't want your footer to print on a blank page and waste your paper. So always make sure you print when it's like that. Now, last part of it, because you can't forget, two-page letter on envelope. And so 
this some of this information, we're actually going to take the envelope. What I like to tell people to do when it comes to envelopes, because sometimes it can get a little tricky and it can print bad. And so what I tend to ask people to do is create, and let me see, I haven't done it in this, okay, mailings, it's hiding it. Create envelope. And it's going to pick up, um, it's going to pick up, it's going to pick up the information when you create the envelope. And if you just click add to document, what happens is it adds this envelope perfectly with the inside address where it's supposed to be perfectly right there. Now, the problem sometimes comes with when people are trying to print this. Sometimes it prints funny. And so I always like to tell uh, my students to make sure you avoid that, which you can also do is do a blank document and go to mailings, envelope. Well, what I want to do is go back and undo this. And I'm just going to copy and paste because the mailing notation comes over as well as the attention line. And so I'm going to copy that information and take it over to envelope, mailings, envelope. This is the delivery address. So this is the delivery address. Special delivery comes over, but it doesn't come over in this part. Um, and so I copy it over, my return address. So let's say, I think on my letter, I made up one. Oh, oh let me make it up again. Then. <laughs> um, number three, four, five, Bahama Lane, P O. Box F4567, Freeport, Bahamas. That's my address. My uh, mailing notation actually could come, well, doesn't help there, sorry. And so once I put in um, the delivery address, I put in the return address, which is the address of the person that's um, sending the mail. Add to document. We don't want to add any addresses or anything. There we go. Now it's perfect. Um, I want to fix this a little bit just because it's like cutting off the Mr. Travel Delegate Radio. And so now this is the proper way. What I'm going to do is pay attention to my font. Um, my font is not the same. Again, they normally tell you which font to use so whatever font you type your letter with font and size let's say we use arial 11 from the same thing here arial 11 my mailing notation my special mailing notation you can type that over here as well special delivery you can type that as well, special delivery, and this should be your envelope. Um, if it prints on this page, then it's no big deal. But when you were to print it, of course, file and print, it's going to look like that. And so it's supposed to print on the page, even though you don't put in an envelope size paper, it's supposed to print on the page and still end up looking like an envelope. So let's see if we try it, what will happen. Because I have no idea. And we'll test. If I go to my desktop, how will it look? Okay, and it will print out like this, which is fine, because if we did use envelope paper, then we still would know that it print properly. And they can still tell that okay, you had the stuff in the right spot, and that is what you're concerned about. And so um, all of that is just information on preparing 
what we call the two-page letter. So those are the things that you look up.